Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise be to the Almighty God. One more time, friends, we are coming to you live. This is Strange Altar Ministry, a circumstances changer. My name is Minister Errol Trench. It's a wonderful night. Again, one more time, we get a chance to come to you, to speak with you wherever you are around the world, to talk with you about the goodness of the Lord, to share with you about the greatness of Jesus Christ. I'm always excited each and every day, each and every week to come to you and to let you know that God is good. All the time, God is good. Somebody said, God is good? All the time. All the time, God is good. I'm always very excited just to come and talk to somebody about the Lord. The good news is if you've seen me this night, this day, this hour, I made it. Amen. I made it in the name of Jesus Christ. I made it. And so often, as long as we can show up another day, that show, shows that we made it. We made it. If you're hearing my voice right now, you have made it. To God be the glory. We deserve to give God. We, we, we should be honoring God for the fact that we made it. Amen. I'm sure that the enemy do not always want us to make it. But to God be the glory. We made it. Whoever you are, wherever you are around the world, I want you to tell But you didn't make it on your own. You make it because of God. God allow you to make it. Well, one more time today. Hallelujah. I'm honored to be in studio with a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful woman of God. Of course, definitely, we were together last week. Apostle Stewart, Dr. Apostle Stewart, all of the, the, the names do not do her justice. She's a powerful woman of God. One in whom I am pleased to know, and I'm not only pleased to know. When we get into this ministry, sometimes the ministry road could be very lonely. And there's a lot of people that I've communicated with over the years, for many years that I've been in ministry. But I must say to you, when God gave this ministry to me, to Trench Altar Ministry, many times I want to, the road gets lonely being an altar builder. But when God brought this woman of God in my life to help me and to pray with me and to speak and a word over me, God knows that I couldn't do this by myself. And so often, when I'm going to those altars, I would call Dr. Stewart and said, Apostle, I'm out here. And she would say, I know. I'm praying for you. And I'm honored to know this wonderful woman of God. I'm honored. And tonight, not only that I'm glad that she's here in studio at Trench Altar Ministry, but I'm sure and I'm so wonderfully glad that she have a word to share with you. May God ever bless you. Minister, Apostle Stewart, Dr. Stewart. Praise the Lord. I would like to in introduce you to this wonderful people around the world. And I know that you, we, I don't think we finished last week, but Praise God Lord. brought you back this week to do your stuff. Amen. Amen. May God ever bless you. Oh, thank you for May the May God ever bless you. May God ever bless you. Wonderful words and uh, introduction to these marvelous human beings around the earth that we are connected to. Amen. Even though we do not see their faces, that's right, that's right. they are our brothers and sisters, and uh, we've come to tell you about one greater than ourselves. And uh, I'm delighted to be able to even speak the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, the floor is certainly yours, Dr. Stewart. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless Amen. You. God bless you. Thank you. Take over, please. Thank you. God Thank bless you. you. God bless you. God bless you. Well, in the name Jesus Christ, and in no other strength and no other name, because his name is indeed sufficient. His name is indeed above all names. And uh, 
going to tell you some things tonight that, of course, the one that we're talking about tonight for a little bit, we started talking about Peter last week because the Lord spoke to uh, Minister Trent and asked him a question. And uh, usually when the Spirit of the Lord asks a question, we must answer, we must make a response. And so I submitted myself to the task of answering the questions along with Dr. Trench and so many others that may be asking the same question. Jesus asking questions, do you love me? And so tonight, I am exceedingly moved uh, each time I come into the presence of God, which I praise more often than not. But I want to tell you, each time I come into the presence of the Lord, doesn't matter how many times a day, how many times during the night, it's still an awesome experience, and I'm praying and that you will catch up to me on the journey with the Master. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I am a minister of prayer. And uh, I'm telling you that no ministry will survive over time without a ministry of prayer. I know that. And sometimes the church is not up to the level of their endurance or their warfare. But we learn to dwell, we learn to exceed, we learn to excel, forbear long suffering in the ministry of prayer, which is needed. We need endurance. Amen. Amen. And so prayer gives you that elasticity in the journey. Somebody say Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so tonight in the name of Jesus Christ and because of the uh, the wonderful gift of healing uh, which the Lord uh, sought fit to um, bless me with I'm, I must then do what uh, I am called to do so among other things, I pray tonight that during this message that by the power of Christ Jesus and the Holy Spirit, the Father, that you will receive an impartation even of salvation from the Master himself. You see, it's okay not to uh, be a believer at the end of this message. You might be a believer. And so I'm praying because I'm not here to talk. I'm here to exhort, to pray, and to impart this great gospel to you. The name of Jesus Christ. And so let me just pray for you one bit um, tonight in regarding the safety and um, of your bodies and your minds and pray that you are healed from some condition as I pray on. And as I minister on that you be healed because the healing impartation will be on as well and so Lord God I thank you tonight as I speak now when I ask that the the wind of God across the nations if there's one thing that there is not lacking in is wind Hallelujah. there's no lack in water that's right nor is there lack in earth. Hallelujah. And so because I have learned to take yes. authority over the works of his hands. Yes, Jesus. Yes. And tonight I speak hallelujah. and I ask the wind of God yes, to begin to stir itself up where you are. Yes, Jesus. And the wind has the power of hallelujah. God in it to do what we ask it to do. Yes, Lord. And yes. so I ask now that the wind of God Yes, begin to rise up where you are hallelujah and move in a way to take out of itself yes jesus any any uh any uh impurities 
any diseases forming in the wind tonight. Yes, hallelujah. Lord God, any uh, residue of, of, uh, of COVID hanging over your house, outside your door tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. And I speak to the wind and I say, wind of God, arise and stir yourself. Empty yourself tonight of any spirit of infirmity and in the name of Jesus Christ and then heal yourself. I speak to you, wind of God, heal yourself. And then, oh God, now, open again the lungs of those whose lungs are shutting down because I've asked that the wind uh, cleanses itself so it does not carry a spirit of infirmity or death by the will of God tonight. Amen. And so Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ right now, hallelujah. I cannot but tell you that um, we are deeply burdened and saddened by the conditions across the earth. But if God would permit me to do this, and I do not do this outside of the will of the Father, if the Lord God would permit me tonight to ask again that an oxygen tent, Hallelujah. that a <laughs> an oxygen tent from the heavens would form over your house. Hallelujah would form over your cars as you drive. Yes, Jesus. Even though you may not see it, that you may feel a rejuvenating wind. Glory to God. And that which was not good shall turn into good. Mm -hmm. And that, oh God, and that which was impure shall turn into purity in the name of Jesus name Christ, of Jesus Messiah. Christ. And I command the spirit of infirmity to be blown away yes. in the name of Jesus Christ God, God. as God permits tonight. Yes. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, I speak tonight a word of protection over you. And it may not sound as though you know it, but if you would listen to me, this great psalm will speak to you. It's like this, and um, I'm going to ask you at the end of this, uh, did you know what I was praying? And if you don't know the Bible, I'm going to introduce you to the great word of God. Amen. Amen. And so tonight, this protection uh, prayer for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, somebody say, I am hidden in the secret place. I am hidden in the secret place. I am place. hidden in the secret place. Yes. I am protected from all perils and danger, yes. even the snare of the fowler. I'm guarded by angels trusting in God. Hallelujah. Uh, I'm successful in warfare. That is because a thousand fall at my side and ten thousand at my right hand. Uh, I'm delivered from my enemies. Hallelujah. They come at me one way and they flee seven ways. And uh, I am loved by the Father because I love the Father. And uh, he answers me when I cry out for help. That's what he said. Uh, and I'm honored and favored tonight. Uh, gifted with long life. Somebody say amen. Amen. That was the great and awesome Psalm 91 converted into another language, another prayer language for you. I am. We praise the name of the Lord. The name Hallelujah. Of the Lord. Hallelujah. So let us answer some questions tonight. Um, uh, praise be to God. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Praise Somebody Lord. praise be to God. Hallelujah. I want to tell you tonight that um, you are in for a good time. Amen. Let me explain to you that in John chapter 15 and verse 16, there is this awesome word Hallelujah. that you did not choose God. Hallelujah. You did not choose Jesus Christ. I want to tell you something. You're in for a good time and a safe time, but you don't know it because you did not choose Jesus Christ. If you are saved, if you are a believer, he chose you. Amen. Hallelujah. And you were chosen in him before the foundation foundation of the earth and so tonight I give God praise because I know that you are wondering well am I am I not am I not well listen to me he chose you praise God 
and you were predestinated to be chosen and you need to brag about that I am predestinated to be chosen now there's a question before us tonight and it has to do with a matter of faith now faith is not as easy as you think it is and it's not as complex as you think it is but there are statements of faith in the Bible there are statements of faith by which churches announce themselves and uh, uh, speak of their mission statement they call that statements of faith but let me say to you tonight Jesus said your faith makes you whole amen hallelujah Jesus said you uh, let me let me make this whole script of faith a little bit more Eat a little bit more faithful for you mm -hmm. and less scary for you Hallelujah. because folks like to beat upon you and say you don't have enough faith that's why you were not healed but listen to me Hallelujah. if you call out to me tonight yes. and you say apostle I know that if you pray for me I will be healed yes just the fact that you called out to me Amen. and you knew that when I prayed you were healed the Lord Jesus is saying to you tonight your faith Hallelujah. I don't have to wait for a report come on, come if on. you believe oh God come tonight on, this is not as complicated as we theologians like to make it hallelujah if you believe glory to God glory so what shall I believe if you believe tonight yes that I have prayed that the air over your head be cleansed. Glory. And if you were coughing, and if you were sneezing, and if you believe that if this apostle prayed for you tonight, that the wind would cleanse itself, mm -hmm. and that an oxygen tank was on its way over to your house, then you are already healed. Hallelujah. It is not possible for it not to happen. Hallelujah. Jesus said, Oh, Abba. Hallelujah. Abba, Abba, Abba. So reach out and ask the question. Ask like the centurion. Ask like I told you to ask. And your faith Hallelujah. makes you whole tonight. Yes, come on now. In the name of Jesus Christ. And now there's a question that we were contemplating the last time. And uh, Jesus Christ, our eternal master who knew Peter before he was formed, before his parts were formed. Uh, Peter doesn't know that, but I want to tell you tonight that Jesus knew you. Yes. Uh, wait a minute, uh, you don't hear me. I want to say to you, Jesus knew you. Yes, come on. Now. And you see, I believe that when Jesus came and walked on the earth and met 12 men, which became his closest friends and his apostles by which we know. I looked down into scripture and I saw that at the end of time in Revelation that the 12 apostles uh, or what we call the 12 stones they're the 12 cornerstones of the house of Israel Amen. and so I happen to believe tonight that Jesus strategically launched out uh, and called a man from every tribe yes. Now, I didn't see it, but I have enough good sense to know that Jesus would have called one from the tribe of Dan, Naphtali, Judah, Benjamin, oh, hallelujah, Asher, may I go on? He yes. would, yes. yes, and yes. Jesus Christ, strategically knowing what he was doing, met up with Simon Peter, yes. and then, uh, Oh, I love this character. I love this man of God because he is us. Last time I was here, I told you that um, his uh, down sittings and his uprisings yes. were exactly ours in the Christian walk. Oh. You see, the Christian walk is not like, uh, wait a minute, <laughs> you would not learn if it were rigid. You would not learn anything. It's like this, uh, oh, like this, sometimes on, on. Sometimes off, off, 
Sometimes we stumble off, off, and almost falling yes. in the stumble, and then we straighten up. Uh, and sometimes we fall all together, right. but we get back up again. Yes. That's right. Amen. That's right. And so we have. Uh, do, do, wait a minute. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, can we look past? Not not, not only look past Peter's uh, 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 imperfections. Yes. Uh, no, his imperfections are pointing to our growth. That's right. And uh, I won't want you to look at Peter's imperfections. Uh, I want you to look around you and see how many Peters they are. That's right. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, do then. Thank you. Put it down. Give it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so, <clears throat> Peter's journey is very 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 crucial to our understanding of christian development and how the believer is transformed one belief at a time one word at a time one experience at a time and no man can measure my walk with christ neither can i measure yours but at the same time i'm watching for the fruit that comes out of your interaction with christ jesus and so we give God praise and thanks for this great study in the uh, that that we call this man that we call Peter in the name of Jesus Christ. You see, Jesus Christ did not come to call the rich and the famous. He did not come to call the wealthy or the religious. But he knew that Peter was a religious man. He was a Jew. That's right. And Jesus was a game changer, religion breaking. <laughs> religion breaking master yes, yes. and so he knew that he had to get the uh, the stuff out mm -hmm. of Peter the doctrine well and the isms and well the schisms said. out of Peter well and said. so he took Peter close by him in the name of Jesus well Christ said. Well said. and you see now Jesus hallelujah this Christ Jesus that heals hallelujah. that raises the dead <laughs> that walks on water he is the master that you want to know. That's right. Because some days it's going to seem like uh, you are exactly in a boat and you can't get off. <laughs> That's the name of the Lord. That you are looking right at a Red Sea. You're looking at a Lake Tiberias. You call it the Sea of Galilee where Peter was. <clears throat> And so, hallelujah, Jesus Christ is going to demonstrate some things to Peter and to you and I Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise you God. see, Peter is not the only one that didn't understand and did not trust exactly as Jesus expected them to. Right. He was not the only one. Yes. Thomas was uh, another famous one that we like to talk about. And, mm -hmm. But see, see, there's something that happened to Thomas now. Thomas was, after Jesus Christ came from the dead, Thomas was not in the room when Jesus came and visited the disciples the first time. Come on. No, he was not in the room. We hear you. No, no. Hallelujah. And so, the next time that Jesus showed up, and Thomas is saying, look, I don't care what you're saying. I will not believe it unless I see the marks. Now, he's gone down into uh, history, but nobody talks about uh, the Thomas that went and evangelized India. I want to hear somebody talking about that. Come on now, come on. The name of Jesus Christ. Do not be led away by silly arguments. Hallelujah. Let me say to you, hallelujah. The next time that uh, Jesus visited his disciples after his resurrection, Thomas was in the room. And then the master, knowing that Thomas was in the room, because I'm sure that I'm sure that the rest of them must have said, "Look, the master was here." That's right. Just like he said he would. That's right. Where were you, Thomas? Where were you? That's right. He came and he left, but Jesus came back another time. <laughs> Because what you need to know and what this apostle is going to tell you tonight. That uh, when Jesus came back the second time. Jesus breathed. 
Oh, Hakara Bosha. Glory to God. Jesus, breathe! Dr. Trent. Come on now, come on. I said, when he came back. Yes. Knowing that Thomas did not have the power to believe. That's right. Thomas did not have it. Hallelujah. And so Jesus enabled yes. them yes. to on. believe. Come on now. You understand what I'm saying. Jesus must enable you Hallelujah. to believe. Otherwise, you'll be just like a Peter. Just like you me. will stay stagnated That's just right. like a Thomas. Come on now. Come on. Except uh, Jesus breathe. Come on now. And so, you said, well, Hallelujah. weren't they given the Holy Ghost in the upper room? Yes. yes Jesus. But Jesus. Breathe on them first. Yes, hallelujah. Oh, Lord, hallelujah. have mercy. Hallelujah. Jesus, breathe. Yes. On the twelve first. Yes, yes, come on now. So that when they went into the upper room, yes, yes. That was another breath. That's right. The Holy Ghost. Amen. But I tell you, oh, Kashara Busha. The question remains mm -hmm. if Thomas said, I will not believe until. until I see the marks in his hand. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you something. I'm just asking, mm -hmm. did he believe in the resurrection at all? Come on. Come on. Whoa. Did, whoa. Whoa. Dr. Trench, come on now. Come you on. can come into the picture. Come on. Come in on. In the name yes. of come on. Jesus I hear you. Christ. I hear you. I hear you. I'm asking you in I this hear you. house. I hear you. I hear you. If hear you. Thomas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Said I. Wow. Wow. Good question. Good question. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. I was consternated mm -hmm. when the depth of the unbelief mm -hmm. rattled my system mm -hmm. because I said, wait a minute. If he's saying that I must see the marks to know mm -hmm. that that's what happened, then he could not have believed in the resurrection. Locking, locking of belief there. Come on, preacher. And so, Come on. Jesus Christ, mm. who was this time? Come on, come on, come on, Apostle. Oh God. Jesus Christ is destined mm -hmm. to raise up from the dead those who die Come in on. him. Come on now. Come on. And because he loved mm -hmm. his own, he gave Thomas the ability to believe. Mm -hmm. I'm asking you tonight to let Jesus Christ give you his Hallelujah. His ability Glory to, God. to believe. Glory to God. Because you cannot believe the Ruah. Glory to God. He breathed on them. Come on, preacher. And then he left. Come on, preacher. And today something happened. Come on. Something happened in John chapter 21. Come on, preacher. Verse 15. Hallelujah. After the amazing, miraculous catch of fish. Come on. Come on. Let me say this. I happen to believe that everyone that Jesus met in the Gospels went away saved. Jesus did not just meet them, open their eyes and left them. Come on. No. <laughs> he Hallelujah. deposited something mm -hmm. into them in the exchange. That's the name and as I'm preaching to you tonight, I need something to happen to you as I preach. But in John chapter 21 and verse 15, Peter was doing what he knows how to do best. Come on. He was actually a master of the sea. That's right. That's right. He was supposed to command the waves, and Jesus knew it. Come on. But Peter did not have the spiritual dimension to understand 
that he too would one day be able to speak to the ocean come on now. and fish would come up the Bible doesn't record that he did it but I know that if Jesus Christ meets you at this point of contact that he has come to impart power into you Amen. to do that thing that he's doing to you hallelujah I'm saying <laughs> if Christ has come to heal leprosy he's going to release you into a place where lepers are come on come on come on listen to me Tonight, listen to me. Jesus Christ. The first two people Peter Jesus met, they were youngsters. They were about 16 years old. And Peter was walking with Jesus a very long time. Came the day that Jesus would ask Peter three questions, but they were the same words. Say. <laughs> Same. same question yes. three different dimensions mm -hmm. and each time he went deeper yes. and each time he went deeper and deeper and deeper Hallelujah. as the same would you die for me come on, come on. not only do you love me mm -hmm. more than these fish come on, talk. Jesus is asking Peter yes. after you finish mm -hmm. Being satisfied yes. with the fish that I gave you yes. to eat, That's right. the fish that I gave you to sell, mm -hmm. I boosted your economy. Wow. <laughs> you went home with a pocket full of money. That's right. <laughs> Good conversation. You have enough conversation. Oh, conversation. <laughs> Good conversation. And Jesus is saying, uh huh. Well, look, I have to tell you, in this great walk of faith, I constantly don't look at Peter, look at you, look at me. Because every day I meet people that I don't see them again after they're healed until the next time something happens. So Jesus was not after the man Peter. He was after the human nature. Come on. Oh God. Come on. Preachers have it. Apostles have it. Yes. Jesus was talking to 11 men in the room. Mm -hmm. They were apostles. Yes. So they should have had it. You should have been able to handle the stuff. But guess what? Mm -hmm. Jesus asked Peter. Now, Peter, I've given you probably 10 days' wages. Come on. <laughs> I've given you more fish than you've seen yes. <laughs> in yes. a month. Yes. Now, Peter, Peter I've cancelled your debt. Mm -hmm. People are going to call you super fishermen. Come on. Yes. I might have changed your reputation around here, yes. Peter. Yes, come on. Ah, okay. Not the same. Not the no, same. No, no. But, same. Peter, demonstrate to me tonight mm -hmm. that you love me. Mm -hmm. Jesus is asking. For a demonstration of your commitment. Come on, Richard. He's not just asking you to love me. Everybody talks about I love you. I love. That's not what he's saying. Come on. Saying, do you love me? Mm -hmm. Then, if you love me, then would you feed my sheep? And then, Peter, let me Come on, Richard. Do you? <laughs> how much? Do you love me? Then Jesus, knowing that Peter was becoming brokenhearted, Jesus then testing his level of commitment. Peter not yet knowing what his life would really become. He said, you know that I love you. And Jesus said, if that is the case, I'm giving you an assignment. And I'm saying, now, he said, first, Peter, feed my lambs. Less than a month ago, I heard audibly in my ear, in my own ear, Feed 
my sheep? Yes. Loud, and I said, yes. Simon Peter, son of John, you know that I love you. Then feed my lambs. Simon, son of John, do you love me? Shepherd my sheep. Take up the rod. And go to the barren heights. And go after not the ninety and nine, but the one. Simon, son of John, do you love me? Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Feed my sheep. I assure you, when you were young, you would tie your belt and walk wherever you want. But when you grow, you stretch out your hands and someone else will tie you and carry you where you don't know, you don't want to go. But Peter, in the meantime, keep on following me. And so then, let me say to you tonight, when Jesus asks a question, before you receive your assignment, Jesus needs a heart-to-heart -heart commitment. He did not say, will you follow me, Peter? He said, do you love me? Three times. I need an answer because if you love me, you will do what I ask you to do. That's right. If you love me, I will not have to ask you if you should feed my sheep. You will willingly, instinctively, lovingly feed my sheep. And Peter, if you love me, you will follow me to the death. So then, I'm saying to you tonight, looking only to this powerful, transforming power of Christ, Look, there is something that we have come to bless you with. We have been following the Master. In this hour, it gets more difficult. But can I invite you? We are able to do this because we know the word of God. We know how the story ends. We know that we will come up to the Red Sea. But we know that Pharaoh is going to drown in the Red Sea. Do you know that? We know that you are going to come up to a river Jordan. Will it part for you? We know that. We, <laughs> we know that they're going to take us to jail. And they're going to try to throw us over the cliff. But Jesus said in Luke 21, I will give you the words to say when you are in court. Do you believe that? Come on now. Come on. How much do you lean on this master? I want to tell you something. If you think that the master is far away, he's not any farther away than he was from Peter. He's not any farther yeah. away yes, right. from you today right. as he was to Peter Come in on. that hour. Amen. And so in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. 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 And so you tonight, you are called. Come on. Now here. Come on. This Peter that I don't know. Come on. This Peter. Peter, that nobody said how eloquent he was. Everybody knew that he asked a lot of questions. But he asked the questions so that you and I will know the answers today. And so then, Peter became clothed in the might of Christ Jesus. 
He received the miraculous transfer of the power of Christ as he walked with him. Peter, not any longer in John chapter 15, but now in the second book of Peter, his epistle. Remember, Peter is explaining what it is like to follow Christ. Mm -hmm. Second Peter chapter 3, chapter 1, verse 3. Peter, full of the Holy Ghost, is explaining what Jesus is explaining in the book of John, in John chapter 4 and 15 and 14. Jesus, Peter is explaining this mystery of the divine nature. He knew that. Christ Jesus was alive in him. Let me ask you this question tonight. You must come be uh, you must come farther in the answering this question than just knowing I am saved. I'm asking you tonight, do you know that Christ indeed is alive in the believer? Do you know that in the night when I am attacked like any other apostle, do you know that I'm able to say, Christ Jesus, Son of the living God, mm -hmm. who by one righteous act shed your blood. And you know tonight, Christ Jesus by your stripes mm -hmm. I'm not talking to anybody out here or out there I'm talking because I know that the Bible says in Colossians chapter 1 15 to 20 the Bible says that Christ Jesus was full of the Godhead bodily let me say this to you tonight that if you stick close to the master, if you lean on him heavily, bringing all your cares and all of your fears unto the master, do you know that he has the ability from inside of you to heal your fears, cancel everything that is bothering you in the name of Jesus Christ. Correct your blood systems. Heal your dementia. Wait a minute. Am I talking to anybody? Come on, in the okay. name of Jesus You're Christ. Talking. Talking. Do you understand me? That, look here. Yes. The El Jehovah. Talking. The, talking. Yes, I'm talking. Mm -hmm. Because in the exchange with Jesus Christ, he's just not having a chit chat. He's this depositing everything that is in him into you so then so then as I come and I stretch my hands out to you tonight knowing that Jesus said if you believe my words apostle and if my words remain in you if you believe what I tell you, do you know that I will come and live with you? And do you know that the Father will come and live with you? And that we will make our home inside of you? Do you know that? So that when this apostle uh, walks down the street, hearing that you're in the hospital, Wherever you are in the world tonight, somebody calls in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, my heart is in the same place as yours, and I say tonight, Lord God, um, open the left ventricle now in the name of Yeshua. And I, I, and I hear a word from the Lord, uh, pulmonary thrombosis, uh, and I hear that the lungs are impacted and the heart is going down. Do you know uh, that I'm able to say connect a tube now between the heart and the lungs that you may live? because you see I know I'm talking to one that lives inside do you want it wait a minute I hear you saying 
I preach I'm still finished. Go ahead, you're doing your stuff. You're doing your stuff, Apostle. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Wait a you said, well, I, I, I didn't ask you, Apostle, if I wanted to be an Apostle like you. I don't know about all that, uh, because you people get stoned, hanged, cut, your head's cut off. Listen to me. If you're gonna, your head is going to be cut off, it better be cut off as a believer. Come on. If you're going to be shot, you better be shot in Christ. Mm -hmm. You understand? Because you're going to wake up again. Hallelujah. And I pray that there be some like me that will say, tell me where they have laid him. Come on now. Tell me. Oh, he shot. Oh, the Ayarta. Oh, some nurses and doctors listening to me. The Ayarta is split. Them. And can I say, Lord God, I command that, that, that bullet to retract now in the name of Jesus Christ. And what if I put some metal near your chest and say, and like a like a, a magnet, command the bullet to come out. And what if I ask the master to sew up the suture with a suture? Would he do it? Because I'm talking to my master, whom I answered when he asked me, do you love me? The question is not Peter. Do you love me? love him do you love him let me ask you sir. so well apostle I don't want to be all of that I, I don't want to be an apostle yes I like prayer and I like to heal the I would like to be healed if I'm sick but let me tell you this If you follow Christ, our destination is kingdom priesthood. Look here, we were called to be a kingdom of priests. So don't be taking yourself out of the equation and saying, I don't want to be all of that. Let me tell you something, if it's good for the apostle, it is good for you. I may not be there in your household when your child stops breathing, but I'm saying to you, if you know this master, and if you know that he is all over the place, then listen to me, will you just say tonight that the, the glorious peace of Christ is now released into this situation. Hallelujah. The glorious, miraculous healing power of Christ is released now into this situation. Hallelujah. I guarantee you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Wait a minute, wait a minute. See, the thing about it is that I believe that if Christ had told Peter all that he knew, all that he was going to go through, oh, come on. all that he was going to learn, come on. and how he was going to learn, if anybody had told me. <laughs> come on, Peter. If anybody had told me that after a comfortable existence as a school board official and that I could have headed into a political life I like parliamentarianism, I like constitutional studies, I, I like to know what makes things work. Mm -hmm. But then you know why that was? Because God, Jesus Christ, chose me mm -hmm. so I could understand the kingdom. That's right. You see, I understand the kingdom because I understand how constitutions work. That's right. I understand the power of authority. That's right. And I want to tell you something tonight. Force is not power. You say, well, I don't have your strength. But you have authority. Come on now. Come on. Authority far surpasses strength. Hallelujah. Oh God, listen, if anybody had told me <laughs> that in the night that some devil spirit would be trying to pull me bodily off my bed, do you think that I would do this? <laughs> Come on, Peter. Do, do, do you? Hallelujah. 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 Bless her, Lord. Do you understand? Come on. Do you... Do you do, do. Come on now. 
Would you follow? Would you do this? Would you do this? If you knew that one night you would be coming home from working in a university, you're teaching somebody how to teach. Yeah, you 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 you're doing this stuff, and you you're at the you're at the top of the educational pile. You you're doing your thing and driving home. Driving home. Now I know I'm called. But I'm really pushing it a little bit further. If you, if I'm called, do something and show me. Well, coming home one winter night, and almost home, and my car spun around, just like this, right smack facing a 32 wheeler. The driver got out and he said, "I followed you for 26 miles." Let me tell you something. Do you think anybody? Folks, this Jesus that has called you commands myriads of angels. This Jesus that has called you. There is no devil in hell that can outclass if you know what you're doing, mm -hmm. if you know what you're saying. There is no wicked demonic altar that can take down the altar of God. Hallelujah. No, 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 no. You understand it. But listen to me. First of all, tell me something tonight. Will you commit? Glory to I'm God. going off this, this, this platform. Come on. Hallelujah. But guess what? Sometime, here's something. In 1980s, whenever I would go back to school in September teaching, all school teachers get sick. By the end of October, the school is full of supply teachers because we're all sick. Come on. But guess what? One night in 1989, I was in a church worshiping. And I saw a pool of water appeared at my right hand. And I kind of looked over and I said, that can't be water, I'm in church. I said, but there's water. And I looked down and I saw the face of the master like this in the water. Come on. <laughs> I didn't have a gift of tongues. I finished the song in tongues. But I never got sick again. Listen to me. I stopped coughing. I must have had one day of something that resembled the flu and then it left. It doesn't like me anymore. Then I started to cast out demons. I wasn't going to do that either. I told the Lord, look, I will be a dean of a Bible college. I like that stuff. But I'm not casting out demons. I ain't doing that. Guess what? When demons hear me talk, they tremble, they're coughing, cry, cry out, come out. In the name of Jesus Christ, I want to close this message. Come on. Take your eyes off your impossibilities put them on the master's possibilities mm -hmm. the Bible tells me that Jesus Christ has powers so vast nobody has to double check what he's doing we call that unilateral power Come on. it's like having an insurance policy in that after he's the great underwriter there's some folks in the house know better Come on. but he tells me that he will sign Christ Jesus, let me ask you something. Hallelujah. I want you to pray that those like this apostle begin to multiply across the land. Hallelujah. Because we have some things that we need to talk about. And I want you tonight to forget that you ever heard 
that Peter couldn't walk on the water. And Thomas didn't believe the nails and all that. Look, I want you to look to Christ tonight. Look away from what you can't do. Look away from your culture. Look away from the fact that you can't understand what you're reading too well. And I want you to look away. Look to him who has eternal power. In the name of Jesus Christ said to change you into a, a from a human into a, a superhuman with abilities that will astound your own self. The Lord bless you, increase you in the journey. In the name of Jesus Christ. For this Peter that spoke, stood up after the baptism of the Holy Ghost in Acts chapter 2, began to say, look, these men are not drunk. I know the scripture. These are filled with the Holy Ghost. And then to come and to detail for you, at the end of his life almost, to tell you how to live and how to overcome the difficulties that believers face. Look, if you want to find a job, you have to look for a man who knows to find jobs. You can't ask a man who's been under a job 40 years how to find a job. Ask for somebody who gets fired every week. They know how to find a job. Ask a man like Peter, how did you overcome? He said, well, I made so many mistakes, you can't, I can't count them. But I'll tell you something, he knows how to get you where you're going. In the name of Jesus Christ tonight, the Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, and cause his face to continually to shine upon you. My saying to you tonight is, if there is a solution, then there is no problem. I want you to say it again tonight, Jesus Christ, the solution. Say it, Jesus Christ. I'm going to bear you here. Jesus Christ, the solution. Dr. Trent? Yes. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, the solution, the solution. To, my problem. to my problem. If there's a solution, yes. then there's no problem. That's the Lord bless you tonight. Praise God. I hope that I've left you in love with the Master, was my intention. In Jesus' name, let God arise. Let God arise. Hallelujah. Let the power of the living Christ arise in you. To cut off yes. every spirit of infirmity Amen. and even death. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Friends, <laughs> my God. My God. My God. Let me let me just Apostle Staples. Let me just say something. I didn't plan this at all to say this, but As I start to talk to God about, consistently about opening my knowledge to talk about this gospel, as I start each and every day learning the gospel, this was not something that I planned to be doing. This is, as the apostle spoke, this is not something that I knew that I would be running a thing called Trench Altar Ministry. This is not a thing that I knew that I would be going out and praying into communities. This is not anything that was of my doing, not my plan. But last night as I knelt down to thank God for the knowledge that he's bringing to me, as I knelt down and thanking him that he's giving me some information to give to the people that I certainly do not have of my own. But as I'm thanking him, I remember I prayed this prayer. I said, Lord, and this was last night. I said, Lord, please, not only I'm thanking you for opening up my knowledge and helping me to understand this thing. Not only I prayed that prayer last night, but I'm giving him thanks for opening up my knowledge because just to be coming to you each and every week, no man can do that. Nobody. Nobody does. Nobody. But what amazing 
After giving him thanks and asking him to continue to open up my knowledge, I saw something last night in, a, in my dream. And the apostle spoke about it and I never shared this with her. What I saw in my dream last night was I was driving. And as I was driving, there was a whole bunch of people. This was at night, by the way, I was driving. And there was a whole bunch of people on the street. Just on the street, running across the street, running back and forth like a parade. People. And as, I, as it brought my attention to what's going on, why all these people? But as my vehicle was coming closer and closer, they didn't care when I hit them. I realized it did. I understand. This is last night. And it did not take me long, Apostle. It did not take me very long for me to realize the Holy Spirit showed me these were demons. Demons going through the community at night. They were going in the dream. They were going into people's place. In other words, there were demons all over the place going into people's in a parade format. Going into, like they were going through this, the community. Organized. Going through the community. And I understand, friends, you heard the apostle speak. You know, this wasn't, I didn't plan to say this, but this thing called demons is real. And demons may you may not necessarily be aware that when you put your head down at night, demons go through your community and it's important for you to pray well. You do not know what happened in your community at night. Doesn't matter which community you live in. Doesn't matter whether you're in upscale or downscale. Doesn't matter whether you're in the ghetto. Whether it doesn't matter whether you're in the rich neighborhood. What I'm trying to say to you, the devil, as you can see, the devil command his demons to go about and you'll be amazed that's why the Lord teach us how to pray and it's important as I'm saying this out of my mouth to you pray well at night you're going to lay your head down pray well plead the blood of Jesus Christ over your children because this, I don't believe this was just a dream. I believe this is a vision that the Lord shows me what happened in communities at night. And you may not realize what can be happening in your community. An apostle speak that she didn't think she's going to be cast out demons ever. Demons are real. And I want to finish this off. Many of you families are disturbed. Husbands are disturbed. Wives are disturbed. People are out of their mind. They do not know why. Demons are real. Demons are real. Jesus himself had was a castle. Demons. Out of. I hope somebody catch where I'm coming from. You may say this is just a bunch of gimmick. It's not. If Jesus had was to cast out, then it's not. If the apostle spoke that she never thinks she has to do this, then it's not. I'm encouraging somebody to pray well. The Bible said we fight not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against rulers of darkness. You and I do not know sometimes why our lives seem miserable. It's not your brother who makes your life miserable. It's the enemy. It's not your sister who allow your life to be miserable. It's the enemy. And in the name of Jesus Christ, the apostle of delivered a message tonight that I hope that you will accept in your heart. Apostle, I have to ask you to close this off in prayer. Thank you, Thank you Lord. Yeah. So tonight, to him who is able to keep you from falling, bring you without defect. Do you hear me? To bring you without defect before the Father. Hallelujah. I pray tonight. I'm not just saying I pray the protection of God over you. Hallelujah. 
That's not praying. That's saying that I wish something would happen. That's right, that's right. But I'm saying tonight, even as the Apostle Paul saw the gospel in terms of an armor, and I know that you have heard much about the armor, but all good things come down from the Father of lights. Hallelujah. And I believe if he saw an armor, there's an armor in the heavenlies. Mm -hmm. And I ask tonight for each one of you, and each one of you in the hearing of my voice, that the great armor of God would drop down upon you and lock you in tonight. Covering your head and to your feet. In the name of Jesus Christ, and I pray that the great shepherd's rod. Hallelujah. Oh, these two pieces of ammunition that the shepherd carried. The rod and the staff. And I pray that they manifest where you are. And that you'll be led safely into green pastures and tonight even though you may experience a shadow of death tunnel asthmatic attack panic attack whatever it is near miss accident listen to me come on this rod and this staff is as real now as it was then mm -hmm. and I ask now that the great light of Christ which some have told me I see a light to the right of me going up into the ceiling I don't know where it ends but I ask this great light of Christ mm -hmm. to penetrate the darkness where you Jesus. are where there is light there is safety Hallelujah. in the name of Jesus Christ and I ask right now oh God that your angels that are assigned to you and that they execute that which that they have come to do. And finally, brethren, sisters, let the great righteousness of Christ and the mighty right hand of Christ Jesus, mm -hmm. sitting at the right hand of the Father, support you, lift you up out of difficulty, Glory. out of drowning situations, out of peril and trauma in the name of Jesus Christ it does not matter if you are in the ICU Jesus Christ has a surprise for come you on, come on. the blood clotting is going to change come on. Ah, the lung collapsing is going to expand the ox up through your vertebrae up into your head in the name of Jesus Christ and you shall live and not die and you will be a testimony mm -hmm. to those that do not believe. And you say, well, like the blind man tonight, mm -hmm. how, 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 how did you see? Come on. And you say, a man called Jesus did it. That's right. And you will say, listen to me. On that same boat where Peter was. And Jesus Christ came at the last watch of the night walking on the water and Peter was shaking. The Apostle John said to Peter, can I say to you tonight, as you go to bed, as the clocks change, Eastern time and Pacific time, I want to say to you like, John said to Peter, this is all he said. This is all is necessary. I say to you, Dr. Trench, it is the Lord. Amen. Can I, I'm a bear. Is it enough that I can say to you, it is the it Lord. Is the Lord. That's all I need to say to you tonight. It is the Lord. Whatever peril that you are in, I'm saying to you tonight, it is the Lord. Amen. Be thou comforted. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. put down your head and know Hallelujah. that intercessors around the globe are watching. Mm -hmm. The name of Jesus Christ, Messiah, yes. 
until we see each other again. Yes. Hallelujah. It is Hallelujah. the Lord. Amen. So be it. Amen. In Jesus' name, I give thanks, much gratitude, and I'll see you next time. Amen. God bless you. God bless Amen. you, Pastor. Thank you so much. Well, friends, we want to take this to a close. We want to thank you so much for being here with us. My name is Minister Errol Trench from Trench mm -hmm. Altar Ministry, a circumstances changer. Mm -hmm. And you've been listening to Dr. Apostle Chewin. God Amen. bless you. Thank Shalom. you so much. The Lord bless you, Amen. sir. Amen. And I thank you for the opportunity to speak to your beloved people that love you so much. God bless Amen. You. Thank you for being God here. Bless you. Until next time, friends. Amen. God bless you so much. We will see you again in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Take care of yourself. God bless you. This is the Lord. It is the Lord.